Mental Ray is a really robust lighting and rendering system which has been integrated into 3D Studio Max. It's really good at simulating light and light bounces uh, around and through objects such as the um, examples that we're seeing here. You see the light that is it's bouncing through these diamonds and the caustic effects that have been caused so it's very physically accurate. It can be used not only for things like that, it can be used for architectural render rendering um, such as the example that we saw earlier on this one here. Really nice, really very, very realistic um, view. And it can also be used in film production as well for scenes such as the one as we're seeing here, which was in fact all rendered in Mental Ray. All of this can be produced with scenes which are as simply set up as something like this. Yeah, simple object, couple of lights, and off you go. But as I said, it's a system. Uh, it's not the default renderer inside of 3D Studio Max. We need to change that renderer. And what we need to do is we need to come into our render setup dialog here. And you need to go to your common tab, which is there. Go to assign renderer. Now I've got mine already set to um, mental ray. But if I click on these three dots here about choose renderer, we'll say default. That's my default scanline renderer. If I was to then say Mental Ray Renderer, you see I'm now using the Mental Ray Rendering System. You'll notice all the tabs at the top here have changed. And for this specific uh, scene, what I'm going to do is I'd turn on Caustics, I'd turn on Global Illumination. Um, this particular scene, there's a few settings here that I need to change um, just to make sure that uh, it'll render uh, the way that I wanted it to a few moments ago. But you can see here we've got this thing, we've got Final Gather here for helping us regather our lighting calculations. And again, we're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail in a moment. We've got things like caustics that we can turn on and off. We've got global illumination that we can turn on and off. We can pre-calculate a lot of that to make our rendering a lot quicker. Again, we're going to talk about this a little bit later on. We can change some of the processings, uh, processor settings within this render system a little bit more accurately than we can do with the scan line. We've got different ways that we can sample our anti-aliasing. So we've got set up for that. We've got a whole load of stuff that we can do in here, including uh, motion blur, camera shaders, which are really good fun. We'll play around with those a little bit later. And we've also got some materials as well. So now within my materials, uh, we spoke about this briefly during the materials setting um, or the materials section earlier on. We have a material here. It's a standard material. If I then click on standard, you can see we've got a whole new load of material types that come with this. Uh, we've got car paint materials. We've got matte shadow reflections. We've got pure mental array. We've got the architecture and design materials that we're going to be talking about uh, or working with a little bit later on. So again, we've got the materials there. You'll find as well with things like the daylight system that we're going to talk about uh, in, a little bit, in a little bit longer, sorry, later. If I just put one in there quickly, you'll notice that the integration with the daylight system in 3D Studio is absolutely complete. We've got Mr. Sun there and Mr. Sky which we're going to come back to a little bit later on. We've even got, under our environment settings, we have an exposure control, which, to be honest with you, this is only the one you really want to be using, is the mental ray exposure control here. And that will help per the exposure control of your images prior to you actually creating them and rendering them. So you've got a whole load of things here which are really going to help you create really good, really high quality images. Now the other thing that I should let you know about um, Mental Ray in 3D Studio Max is that you can use it either as a direct rendering system or as a global illumination system. So this is where we're really getting quite a lot of, uh, a lot of return on our investment here uh, in terms of what it's giving us is the flexibility that we can really create anything that we want. Displacements look fantastic uh, bar mapping looks fantastic, ray trace looks fantastic, there's a whole load of things that kind of just open up to us when we start using Mental Ray in 3D Studio Max 
and that's what we're going to be talking about next in the following set of tutorials.